In this video, we shall look at a few review problems associated with angular momentum. Let's look at the definition of angular momentum for a particle. Now let's assume that you have a particle and it's moving about the origin, like that, in some ways, and it has a velocity v, and it is located at a point with position vector say r. Now let's assume the mass of this particle is m. Now we can define an angular momentum of this particle about this point O. And it is given by the mass times the cross product of that position vector and its velocity. Of course, as you can see from this equation, when the position vector is parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity vector, then the angle becomes 0 degrees or 180 degrees accordingly. Then the angular momentum vanishes. Now if you have a system that is made up of more than a one particle or a rigid body system, say a wheel that is spinning about a central axis like that, then the angular momentum for such a system is simply given by the product of two things, the moment of inertia and the angular velocity of that system. Of course, for a single particle such as this one, these two results can be shown to be the same. Now let's briefly discuss what happens if the angular momentum changes. In that case, when we take the derivative of the angular momentum with respect to time, then you get, since i is a constant, derivative of angular velocity with respect to time on the other side. However, we know that this is just angular acceleration. So moment of inertia times angular acceleration is just torque or I should say the net torque according to Newton's second law for rotation. So we have an important result that says the net torque acting on a system will cause its angular momentum to change. Let's look at problem one. At one instant, a force of four newtons in the direction of j hat acts on a 200 gram object at a point with position vector like that and velocity like that, find the angular momentum of the object about the origin. Now, position vectors are defined with respect to the origin. So angular momentum, according to the definition that we have just discussed a few minutes ago, this is a point particle. It's given by the mass times the cross product of position vector and velocity vector. Now the mass is 200 grams. Converting that into kg, you have 0 0.2 kg. Now let's use the determinant method to do the cross product, i, j, k. The first vector is position vector, and it's given by 3i hat minus 4k hat. So 3, 0, minus 4. Now the velocity vector is given by minus 6i hat plus 8k hat. So minus 6, there's no j hat component, and the z or the k hat component is 8 and we need to evaluate this determinant. So 0 0.2, let's do the i hat component. So this times that is 0 minus this times that is 0. So you don't have any i hat component. Now the j hat component or the y component, you have this times this, that is 24 minus this times that, that is 24 as well. Now let's do the k hat. So this times this is 0 minus this times this is 0, so there is no k hat. So the overall answer is just 0 kg meters squared per second. So note that this is a vector, and the reason why you get 0 can be readily seen. Look at the velocity vector. It's minus 6i hat plus 8 k hat, which can be written as minus 2 
times 3i hat minus 4k hat. And this is just the position vector. So in this case, the velocity vector is anti-parallel to the position vector, leading to zero vector for angular momentum. Problem two, a 300 gram object, that is this one here, is shot directly upward with an initial speed of 35 meter per second. So that is the initial direction of motion. What is the object's angular momentum about point Q which is 3 meters horizontally from the launch point. So that means this distance is 3 meters when the object is at the maximum height and when the object is at the midpoint on its way to the ground. Part A is simple. At the maximum height, the velocity vector is zero. So since this is a point particle, or we can treat the object as point particle, the angular momentum is given by mass times the cross product of position vector and velocity vector, and since this is zero, the entire angular momentum at that point is zero. Of course, with a unit kg meters squared per second. Now let's look at part B. The object now it's coming down from the maximum height. Let's say that's the maximum height. So that is the maximum height, and it's coming back to the ground. And at the point where it is halfway, which means the height is the maximum height divided by 2, what is the velocity? So let's determine that velocity first. Let's call it v. Let's call the maximum height point 1, and the midway is point 2. And we apply the conservation of energy to determine this v. As always, I'm going to take this to be the zero joule level for the potential energy. So the potential energy at point 1 is just the mass times gravitational acceleration times the height from the ground. The kinetic energy there is 0 because it is the maximum height. It comes to a complete rest. At point 2, the potential energy is given by mass times gravitational acceleration times the height from the ground now is h over 2. Kinetic energy is half times mass times v squared. v is what we want to determine. Now you see the mass goes away and you can determine your v. If you do that, you see that the speed in a downward direction at that point is square root g times h meter per second. Let's now calculate what h is. To do that, we have to compare the ground and the maximum height as 0.2. On the ground, when it was shot, the kinetic energy is half times mass times the square of the projection speed, which is 35, so 35 squared. It doesn't have any potential energy. At point 2, it doesn't have any kinetic energy, but it has potential energy of mass times g times h. So the mass will get cancelled, and g times h is just half of half times 35 squared. And if you place that in here, you can get the speed at that point, which is 1 over square root 2 times 35 meter per second. We can also calculate the maximum height from this equation, which is just 35 squared over 2g meters. Now let's proceed now to determine the angular momentum. So the mass is 300 grams, which is 0.3 kg i hat j hat k hat Let, let's do the cross product the first vector is the position vector of that particle at that point now the position vector it's given by that vector plus that vector remember we are calculating the angular momentum about point q so this is three meters so the i hat component for the position vector is 3, so 3i three hat, and the vertical is h over 2, so plus h over 2 j hat. So that is the position vector. So i is 3, the j hat component is h over 2, h is given by that, so 35 squared over 4g that is, because you have to divide by 2. 
and there is no k component. Now the velocity. Velocity is in a downward direction, so that means it's minus j hat with this much magnitude, 35 over square root 2. So there is no i component. The j component is minus 35 over square root 2. There is no k component, and that's it. So let's do that cross product. So L midway is given by 0 0.3. Let's do the J i hat component like that. So this times that, that's 0. So there is no i hat component. Now the J hat similarly goes like that. So this times this, 0 minus this times this, 0. No J hat component either. And finally, the K hat component. This times this minus this times this, which is the second term is 0. The first term is just 3 times minus 35 over square root 2. So that is this times that minus 0 for this times that k hat. And doing the calculation, you get minus 22.3 k hat. The unit is kg meter squared per second for the angular momentum at the midpoint. And that solves the problem. Problem 3. The moment of inertia of a wheel about its central axis, that's this axis right there, is 0 0.2 kg meter squared. Its angular momentum increases from 1 to 4 kg meter squared per second in 1.6 seconds. Find the magnitude of the average torque acting on the wheel about its axis during this time. So let's do part A. The magnitude of the average torque is given by the change in angular momentum over the time interval it takes to make that change. So the change in angular momentum is final angular momentum minus the initial. So the final is 4. The initial is 1 kg meter squared per second. And the interval is 1.6 seconds. And this should give you the torque in Newton meter, which is 1.8 seven five newton meter now part b if the wheel has constant angular acceleration through what angle does it turn let's first find that constant angular acceleration it is given by that torque over the moment of inertia the torque was found to be 1.875 that's from part a the moment of inertia is 0 0.2 about this axis so your angular acceleration is given by 9.375 radian per second squared. We can use kinematics to solve part B. First of all, we need to know the final angular speed and initial angular speed. That's given by the angular momentum for the final angular momentum. Divide by the moment of inertia to get the final angular speed. And initial angular speed is given by the initial angular momentum, which is 1 over the moment of inertia, which is 0 0.2, all in SI units of radiant per second. So to find the angle which, with which it turns, you can use the kinematics, the rotation kinematics equation, which is that. Omega F is given by that. Omega I is given by that. Alpha has been computed. It's that. You can determine the angle with which the wheel turns. And if you do that, you get 20 radian for delta theta. And that's the answer for part B. Now part C, find the work done on the wheel. Work, in this case, is done by that torque. It is torque times the angular displacement. Now we have calculated the torque. The magnitude is 1.875 newton meter. And the angular displacement is 20 radians, and that's going to give you 37.5 joules. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.